Good evening, Sydney siders and everyone else around New South Wales, and I'm sure plenty from Queensland, Victoria, South Australia. I don't want to leave anyone out, Western, Northern Territory, and of course Tasmania, not to mention everyone who's joining from overseas. My name is Paul Bars. Welcome to the Internet Blueprint. Now, over the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be interviewing some experts in various fields for online business, and tonight we have with us the very wonderful and the very beautiful, I hope she doesn't mind me saying that, Zoe Wyatt. Now, I've known Zoe myself for quite some time, and Zoe is without doubt someone whom I would consider to be one of, if not the foremost expert on social media marketing here in Australia for all levels of business. Now, Zoe has, I guess as a quick introduction, I have a little few things here which I, I could read off, but maybe I should just talk from personal experience. I know that she's Sounds a speaker. Good. Yes, she's a trainer, a business mentor, internet entrepreneur. Zoe operates and has worked for years many different businesses from her laptop while traveling the world. In fact, she's in a hotel tonight, staying in the lap of luxury in Sydney for a client training tomorrow. So uh, I'd like to just introduce, if I can, Zoe, say a few things. Give us a bit of a quick background as to why you think I've chosen you for tonight's show. Social media, Zoe Wyatt. Give her a hand, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Paul, and hi, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for that very gracious invitation. Um, I am actually sitting in a hotel suite in Sydney. In fact, I'm straight across the road from the Novotel, uh, from, across from... ANZ Stadium and apparently I'm the only person here tonight that's not going to the Pink concert. I'm actually here to do social media training so I'm with a private client and we're working on what's happening in social media to grow their business right now. And I think in the last 12 months as a background to me really the thing that has changed dramatically for me is that social media has become as I call it inevitable. You know, social media is just another communication tool. And the same way you would not think of trying to run a business without an email address, the same is now true for social media. But for a lot of businesses, small, medium and large, I see them really grappling with the amount of time they're dedicated to social media and really tracking the results that they're getting out of it. So I know, Paul, you've got a series of questions for me tonight, but I just want to emphasize to everybody that's listening I want to give you the maximum results from the next you know, 30 to 45 minutes or so and really so you can walk away with tangible things to put to work in your business to really get social media working for you. All right. Sounds great. Thank you very much, Zoe. I might begin my first question with the question, how much time did you, Zoe, actually spend on social media today just in amongst everything else that you would have been doing? And then what do you think, what kind of return might come from that, from your own business or just the shout outs through all the different social media channels? Wow. So how, much, of, yep. how much time and, and possible return? Okay. So first and foremost, um, all of my marketing is now done via social media and via the internet, um, whether that's paid advertising or just social networking. For me, I have structured time. I actually have 15 minutes of, an, of a morning and then again 15 minutes of an evening where I get in and do my marketing as such. I use a third-party tool, so I'm very focused and structured when I do that. But I also do fit in a lot of what I call drips and drabs during the day. So my day-to-day -day consisted of me actually getting up and doing a webinar from my home office. I then drove to the airport. I tweeted by voice um, three tweets while I was in the car to Twitter. Um, hands-free, of course. I then sat in a Qantas lounge and um, scheduled some posts to go out for tonight. So I probably put another five or ten minutes in. Jumped on a train before I got to the hotel here and again there was another 15 minutes there that I utilised. And in that time I actually set up three different trainings. I promoted tonight's event along with an upcoming workshop that I have and I also received two other offers via email for positions that you know are going to bring in either a, a product sale or another speaking gig for me. So you can see by really integrating my social media rather than just sort of putting in a box and saying I'll, I'll get to that for an hour or a day or this afternoon, but by integrating it into the daily workings of my business, I'm able to get back to people in a, you know, a relatively short period of time without feeling like social media is taking over my life. I'll be open and honest and say I haven't actually been on social media personally, so on 
Facebook, Twitter or any or even Instagram yet today at all because that's generally something I, I leave for the end of the day when I sit down, perhaps have a, a glass of red wine on the couch and actually interact with family and friends. Great. So all up, you probably didn't spend more than 20 minutes, 25 perhaps, that block yeah. in the morning and then just a few bits and pieces along the way. Absolutely. Util utilizing downtime and were able to get your message out for those different things to, well, in your case, certainly tens of thousands of people through your social media circles, particularly Twitter. You've got a fair few followers there, haven't you? Yeah, I have. My, my personal Twitter account is at about 46, 47,000 followers um, at the moment, but across multiple Twitter accounts, Facebook, LinkedIn, Google+, Instagram, Twitter, it, it's well up over the 100,000 mark. And, and the amazing thing for me of that is that I can craft messages that represent my business and my brand, and I have multiple businesses that I run, the way that I want them presented, and they can be received by others at a time that suits them, in a medium that suits them, without me doing any additional work. And I think there's a key there. You know, I got really strategic about what I'm trying to achieve with my social media. I do have structured time, but then I take advantage of some smart tools and um, multiple, multiple channel messaging. So I'll, I'll write one message that's appropriate for more than one social network and simply have those scheduled to go out in the most appropriate times for my audience there. Great. So just quickly, two things off that. You talk about the tools. Mm -hmm. and then multiple messaging. Now I know you just mentioned half a dozen, I think you're also uh, on YouTube as well, but your main area there, what are some of the tools that you use to cover so much ground so quickly? Okay, my absolute favourite, and some of you may have heard from before, is a, a tool called Hoot Suite. So Hoot as an owl, H-O-O-T, and then Suite, like Hotel Suite, uh, S-U-I-T-E, Hootsuite.com. And Hoot Suite is a social media dashboard where you think of it like a dashboard in your car, but this one is a dashboard for your social media. So it's cloud-based. I can log on to from any computer. I actually also have an app for my phone and my iPad. Up to five accounts. If you're monitoring up to five social networks, it's free of charge, even better. And then it starts at very low cost. So I can jump on Hootsuite and I have search streams set up. So I know exactly what's gone out on my social networks. Has anybody liked, commented, shared? Are they responding to me? Anybody talking at a battle to me on Twitter? And I even have search terms set up if anyone's discussing my business, my key products, um, or the hashtags that I'm monitoring as well. So having that one dashboard where I can go in and see exactly what's happening is not only very effective because it's all in one place, it's very effective in terms of time management for me because I'm not disappearing down, Alice down the rabbit hole as I call it on Facebook, you know, seeing a cute photo or seeing something from the family or children and disappearing. So I'm, I'm in there and I'm focused um, and it's very quick to respond to. The other thing there we mentioned was the multiple messaging. Um, I yep. am on multiple social media networks. Um, I actually post predominantly to Twitter, Facebook, um, YouTube, I'm missing LinkedIn, both my personal profile and the company page, and my Google Plus page. Predominantly, I actually post to them from Hootsuite. And I think in interaction is still vitally important. So actually touching, you know, Facebook once a day and going in and thanking people or sharing great content that others have produced does require me to go to Facebook itself. But everything else I'm pretty much doing on Hootsuite. It does have an app for Facebook, Instagram, um, where I can see what's going on, but I can't actually post to Instagram from Hootsuite. And the one other one where I've, I've got to be really careful with my time is Pinterest, because I'm absolutely addicted to Pinterest. It's a bookmarking site where you're sharing photos and videos, and if you're a middle-aged female like myself, you're probably already addicted to it. So I have an additional tool called Pinnerly, P-I-N-N-E-R-L-Y, um, which is a pinning tool and also allows me to schedule pins that are going up on my Pinterest. So between the two of those, I've pretty much got all of my social networks covered. Um, and of course, then all of the apps from the major networks I'm using on my phone um, and on my iPad as well. I can see you madly writing down there. Okay, Bob. great. One of the questions... Yes, I'm, I'm making notes because everything that you say brings about more questions, even though I have some here as well. One of the... Uh, primary questions that I do get, of course, is what is the best time to schedule tweets and then what do you also say? 
Ah, yeah. Okay. So there's Am two I still things here? there. Did I yep, disappear for a second then? No. No, yep. I can hear you We're and back. see you fine, so it might just be from your end. Looking pretty good here. Um, no worries. The, this is probably two of the biggest questions I get. You know, what, what do I actually write about? And, and when should I be posting it? So the when yeah. should I be posting it, there's been lots of studies done and for those of you that, that don't know me, I'm actually a marine biologist by training. I have a scientific background. Um, it wasn't such a leap for me to go from marine biology to marketing because realistically what I was doing in the marine biology world was taking complex scientific data, turning that into plain English and training industry and how they could use that. Um, in their businesses. So now I'm doing a very similar thing but it's with marketing data. So I do tend to get lost in the data occasionally. I love my stats, facts and analytics and I will recommend the social media scientists, a gentleman by the name of Dan Zarella, so D-A-N-Z-A-R-E-L-L-A. -L 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 now Dan Zarella has done a lot of studies and statistics on the best time to post. He even goes into the best words if you want them repinned, retweeted, things like that. I will say to you that the best time to actually post is when your audience is actually most likely to be on a given social network and also when they have the time and the impotence to do the action that you want them to do. And everything I do in social media is built around having a primary objective. So for instance, if my primary objective is to get somebody to go to my website, for instance, and give me their name and email address to download my social media for business checklist, then although they may be on Twitter and Facebook in the morning commute, I'm not so sure that they're, they're going to be sitting there on their mobile phone thinking, I'm going to sign up for that now and download that checklist. That is something they're more likely to actually be doing, you know, at 8.30 at night for my business owners. They sit down now, they get dinner out of the way, and then they sit down and have, have some time. I also found, too, by yep. looking at when people carried out action in my business. So when were people actually buying tickets to my training events, for instance. And I discovered that a lot of people were doing it on the weekend um, of, of an afternoon on Saturday and Sunday. So maybe with the best of intentions, I was sort of going to get to that, going to get to that, and on the weekend suddenly they're buying tickets for the event that's coming up in, you know, in only a day or a few days' time. So I started putting out last-minute reminders for events that still had positions uh, available for them, and suddenly I was getting a much better uptake on a Saturday or Sunday afternoon when I initially thought maybe people weren't interested in business. But again, for my small to medium business owners, that's when they were kind of catching up on the books and, and making those, those commitments and those bookings. If you're dealing with, say, a traditional um, government employees, perhaps, or larger organisations, then you may need to be posting between 9 and 5 to get those actions. But remember, with a lot of government organisations, they don't have access to social media, to Facebook and Twitter, while they're at their work desk due to restrictions Which on servers, etc. Yeah, so yes. I have one lady who was working in the edu education industry and she was putting out tweets and posts for trainings and to book into trainings for educators. Um, and of course, they don't even have access to Facebook during the day. So by the time people were actually getting to their Facebook or her appropriate audience, her posts were so far down in their news feed that they were unlikely to ever see them. So again, the best time to post is when your audience is most mm -hmm. likely to be online and most likely to take the action that you want them to take. I normally start with a best guess in trying to find that. I put myself in my client's shoes and think about what else is happening in their life. I look at whatever data I have. So yes. have I got some data like tickets purchased, um, website visits, etc., to go off. And then I, I test it, I track it, I tweak it and I do it again. So I track through Hootsuite. I also track, um, I have my Facebook page linked up to my Google Analytics and the new Facebook insights are absolutely awesome. If you go into the new insights on your Facebook page, um, under the heading, you, you have to click see all and under the heading that says posts at the top, it will actually tell you when your audience is online and not just days of the week but the hours throughout each day of the week. I discovered that I had a lot of my audience up very early on Monday mornings and you know I tweaked yep. things a bit to send out some 6 a.m. posts on Monday mornings and I've been getting really good reactions to them. So my business owners are up and they're running and they're taking action, getting ready for the week on Monday mornings. 
Now, I'm not a morning person, so well, I've actually... You can... <laughs> Sorry, I'm scheduling those through Hootsuite. So you can use some... You can use them Hootsuite, that's right, and, and schedule yeah. them in advance. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Right, terrific. So you... And the other one was another, what to post about. Another quick question, about. if I can. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, what to post about. That's right. Yeah. So I actually have a posting formula that um, I'll share with everybody. I know you've heard this from me before, Paul, but it's my formula. It's it's not a golden rule, but it works for me. And that rule is if you're if you're taking notes as you listen to this, write down the page 30, 30, 30, and then 10. So three zero, three zero, three zero, ten, because. 30% of the time, I recommend that you actually promote yourself, promote your business, actually put social media content out that directly drives to an opportunity for someone to give your business money. And there's a lot of social media gurus that don't recommend promoting products or services at all in social media. But for me, I deal with business owners. There has to be a commercial return to your activity or it's not commercially sustainable. At the end of the day, if it's not driving sales, then it's not it's not worth doing in a business sense. There's no return on investment. You don't want to do nothing but promoting yourself, your products, your business or services, or just get spammy. You know, and people will really shut off because remember they're on social media to interact with their family and friends and to keep up to date with the things they care about. And we want one of the things they care about to be your business, your product or service, but we need to present it in a way that's socially acceptable. So offering them opportunities, giving them updates and really sharing what you have that could benefit them is far better than just saying come and buy a ticket. The next 30% and it's a little counterintuitive is to actually promote others. I'm talking about other products, services, businesses, charities, anything that's not of a competitive nature that is still relevant to the same target audience. And when you start thinking yes, this one through good. a little bit, it's not that big a stretch. You know, really what we're doing here tonight, Paul, is helping to promote each other's business and Sydney Business Month and the whole industry, really. And it's win-win for the two of us. I get to yeah. share some great information with your audience, with the Sydney Business Month audience. Hopefully, we all benefit from the information we're both sharing. But it allows us to position ourselves as people that have something of value to offer. Now, whether or not a person follows through with my products and services by recommending somebody else that's relevant to them and may be able to assist them, then it actually puts me in a better light. Think of it like a business networking event when you walk in. We've all seen that one person that just, I call it saying um, business card slams. You know, he just slams the room with the business card. Hi, I'm Zoe. I do social media. Hi, I'm Zoe. Hi, I'm Zoe. Hi, I'm Zoe. And you very quickly repel from those people. So if you instead go in and start a conversation, then go, oh, by the way, have you met Paul over here? If you need help with internet marketing, he's the person to help you. So think of it the same way. Um, and I always say to people, if you're going to promote others, think about what you would like done for yourself. The easiest way to promote somebody is either to thank them for a great product or service or an undertaking that they've done that you genuinely believe was a good service or to take some of their content that is valuable to your audience and share it back with your audience. Now that way it's win-win because I cannot, you know, I could promote something that you're doing Paula, Sydney Business Month interviews with my audience because then they're going to benefit not just from my interview but from, you know, all of the other experts that are being interviewed as well. My audience likes me because I've introduced them to it but it's also given that introduction to you which hopefully can help grow both of our businesses. The third 30% is just valuable information. Now, of course, it still needs to be relevant to your target audience. So I'm not going to go and offer valuable information about finding a hotel room in Sydney necessarily. It has to be something to do with technology, getting their business online, social media marketing. I might talk about how to get the best internet when you're traveling along the road, for instance. But that valuable information has to be really with no intent of a sale. It's not... Um, you know, social media can be super valuable for your business, um, but only if you come and do a training with me, for instance. So it's things like industry updates. Um, Facebook have just changed their page terms and conditions this week. Um, it made a big difference. For those of you that don't know, I will slide this in here. 
Um, you now do not require a third party app to run a competition or promotion. So that's sort yes. of just information. We're, wa we're waving about that. That's good news. Yeah. yeah. So something like that, an industry update, breaking news, what's changed in your industry. You know, if you're an accountant or in the finance industry, the interest rates changing, all those sort of things. Being a reference source for your community will add value. And then the last 10%, and it's the part that I suggest you do the least of, and I see a lot of business owners actually doing the most of, and it's the inspiration. I call it the bling. Anybody that knows me knows I, I like blingy things. And yes, it's kind of the... Too. Yeah, and a, and a little bit of red wine. So, um, yes. you know, I'm, I, I like to smatter things with bling, but it really has to be relevant to your target audience. It doesn't have to have anything to do with your product and service. It just needs to completely appeal to your target audience. So it's the types of things that make your audience ooh and ah. So it's a female audience in my, my sort of age group. We're looking for the ahs and the ah, oh, that's so cute. And so for we're male audience, puppies. Okay, we're talking yeah, puppies and kittens anything. and motorbikes or for us guys, you know. Yeah, for the guys, yeah. it's things that make you go oh. Or, oh, um, you know, so depending on your market, it could be different graphics, it could be stars or celebrities, it may be um, in the business world, you know, I, U, and R over inspirational quotes, amazing sunsets. Um, for me, anything involving yep. chocolate, coffee, handbags, um, or shoes will generally get me to U, and R. It's a thing that makes Such me a girl. stop. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I am. <laughs> <laughs> so it's the things that make me stop and take notice. It's the things that I want to share with my network and my friends. And you've got to just work a smattering of it in there so that your, your content still stays interesting and social and a little bit of fun. And for me, though, if that's all you do, you could have amazing conversations going on on your social media. And you could have an incredible warm, fuzzy feeling going on but you actually won't be making any money and you'll probably be spending way more time than you need to be. Now, I have one client yeah. and she had a community of over 10,000 on Facebook. Um, she was spending hours a day on it. Everybody loved her. She had incredible reach and engagement going on. With It was a, a baby supply goods business, so lots of images and babies and sharing and wonderful, but she had no visits to her website and wasn't selling her products because she'd forgotten to balance it out with, hey, we're here for business, we do need to slide some commerce in. And of course, when she okay. got that balance right, it worked. Yep. Yep. Could you just give us the, just the quick snapshot again, the 30, 30, 30, 10, just with one line for each. The first one was 30%. the pure promotional for your business. Yep, with direct intent of a sale. Yep, so just give us the... To, yep, 30% yep. promoting So this others. is for people who are just writing them down. Got the yep. Mm-hmm. 30% valuable content and 10% yes. the inspiration, the blings, the ooh and ahs. And of course, okay. all of it needs to be right. relevant to your target audience. And like you were saying, it's just too easy to get caught up on the oohs and ahs. I mean, you drop into Facebook. In my business, I will only have Facebook open a couple of times a day. Once in the morning, and I'm checking what's been happening overseas because I have a lot of US contacts that I'm talking to then I'll drop back in, like I just get rid of it, don't even have it open, but I will drop back in on the computer then at lunchtime, again, checking messages, replying, responding as need be, seeing what's happening, looking for people who are tagging me, asking questions, and then I go, do it again at the end of the day. But I mean, I love the ooh and ah stuff, you know, I like the motivational stuff as well. Probably get a bit too caught up doing too much of it, easy to do. But that yeah. formula works so, so well. It's, I mean, okay, you could, maybe I was going to post you know, 10 messages over a few days and literally do three, 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 and one. Don't have to be OCD about it, but exactly. it would be easy yeah. to follow, wouldn't it? It would be easy to follow. That's right. Yeah, and what I find okay, too is... Okay, I have another quite, question. Sorry? So I was going to say quite yeah, often the valuable information might be coming from somebody else. So sort of promoting others and providing valuable information might blur a little bit, but it's really just thinking about have I done enough promoting myself? Have I... And maybe am I talking about myself too much and I need to go and promote some others or slide in some good information or bring back a bit of the bling. And when you get the mix right, it feels right. You really do get into a rhythm for it. Some of my newer clients, I actually get them to set out just on an Excel spreadsheet a schedule and they will say, okay, you know, Monday, Wednesday, Friday is going to be this type of post, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, that type of post. 
just so they get into the swing of it, then I recommend that you yep. mix it up a bit. You know, keep to that formula, but try them at different times and different days. I can tell yep. you now, most of my bling happens on a Friday because my business owners really don't care about learning very much on a Friday. But sometimes it's Good. a bling or something funny or interesting, and other times it's promoting something for some another business that's happening over the weekend. Great. Well, my next question leads then towards what social networks do we use? How do you choose what's right for your business? What do you suggest? I know what I would, but what would you suggest? How does a business owner say, well, what should I be using? Okay. This is this is my little pet subject, I guess. I, I, I generally get the, I'm on Facebook, what else do I need to do? And when I sort of turn around to a business owner and say, you're on Facebook, why? Um, and they look at me and go, well, everybody's on Facebook. Why shouldn't I be on Facebook? I said, I'm not saying you shouldn't be on Facebook. I ask you, why? Do you have your business on Facebook? So for me, the biggest thing is when before you decide where you're going to market, is actually be very conscious and strategic about what are you trying to achieve. So you know, if you said to me um, you were trying to drive massive traffic to your website, for instance, I would probably be saying Twitter and Google Plus may be worth more attention. If you tell me you're in a business-to-business -business space, perhaps you should be spending more time on LinkedIn. So two things are critical here. What are you actually trying to treat? What's your primary objective? And you may have more than one, but start with one and don't attempt to do more than three at a time. Because if you try mm -hmm. to do everything in general, you'll achieve nothing in particular. Okay, that's really important. The second one is in achieving that core objective, who are you actually trying to talk to? You know, who are you trying to connect with? And spend a great deal of time in identifying your target audience. In marketing we say a target niche, you know, inch wide, mile deep. But in social media we're dealing with people. We're dealing with social interactions. So I might like my clients to get to the stage, they can develop the person. They can actually develop a persona. I have a person that sits on my shoulder, her name's Sally, Savvy Sally, and she's my target persona. And when I'm developing content for my social media, I think, what would Sally think of this? How would Sally react to this? Would Sally be on this social network and would Sally be there right now? Um, otherwise, I may hit some people but I'm not hitting my target. And a lot of people have difficulty as business owners trying to you know, tie things down to a target niche. Now I deal with, I added them up um, last month, I've dealt with over 100 different industries in the last 12 months. So I'm not industry specific but the type of person that I'm dealing with within those industries is, you know, I know that they're a savvy professional person, I know that they're very time poor, I know that they see the power in social media but just don't get it, I know that they're kind of in the 35 to 55 year age group, the majority, um, and I know that they want to learn the 20% of social media that will get them the 80% of results and please Zoe, deliver it to me in plain English. So once I identified that, I was able then to go and look at, okay, where is Sally on social media? Where are the most effective places for me to be talking to Sally? And Sally is on Facebook. And Sally really where was, you know, Facebook is a, I get the largest results of my marketing from. Even though I personally prefer Twitter. I spend a lot more time on Twitter socially. I get amazing results from Twitter. You know, so it's important for me to look at not just what I like or what I'm comfortable with, but where I'm actually going to achieve my core business objectives. Um, the other thing I've noticed with, with bringing this on too is that you don't have to like the social medium that you're working on. You just have to know why you're there and really put yourself in your client's shoes. Yep. I have a very technical way of checking. Um, if my messages are too much or, you know, missing the mark or not. And it's called the three-point check. You probably can't see from there, but it's my head, my heart, and my gut. I have a line between the three. And if it starts get veering off-center, so in other words, if anything I'm posting feels a bit, ugh, feels a bit iffyish or feels a bit spammy, then I know it is. So if you're dealing specifically with Australia, there's 11, more than 11.5 million Australians now on Facebook. For most businesses, it is a good place to start with your social media marketing because um, the middles, the, the 25 to the 35 year olds and the 35 to the 45 year olds are the biggest demographics. But the older ones are 
growing rapidly. The fastest growing demographics are the 55 year plus and the females rather and the 50 year plus males. So they're mm -hmm. there but are they actually going to lead to your key business objective? You know, so if you really just want to get your business found in Google, then you need to take that core objective and say, okay, who do we want finding it in Google? What keywords do we want them finding it for? And maybe should we be looking at our activity on Google and Google Plus more before we get too hung up on building, you know, a massive number of likes on a Facebook page? Yeah, and that actually leads me to another question that I was going to just perhaps talk very briefly about, and that is in regard to social media, search engine marketing. How do they work together? Do they work together? Now, obviously, as you know, I run SEO workshops up and up and down the coast, um, and I'm well aware that it can affect it. But what do you hear? That's from an SEO point of view. What do you hear from the social media side of things? Uh, short answer: Yes. It affects it. So, okay, that was easy. Zoe yeah. White, moving Any on. Any other questions? <laughs> um, from, it, it does. From a, yeah, from a representative from Google themselves. Now, Google don't give away too many secrets, obviously, but they are now talking to us, as you know, Paul, and they will actually yes, return phone calls, which is amazing. Indeed. And the, part of the reason for this, obviously, is Google+. And I say to my business owners that say to me, you know, do we need another social media network. Google Plus to me is not another social media network. It's actually a social layer across the top of all the Google products. Mm, and indeed, for yep. business, for me, as far as I'm concerned, for business, particularly business in Australia, Google is indispensable. You know, 97% of all searches performed in Australia are done on Google. The second largest search engine on the planet is YouTube, which is also a Google product. So if you're looking to optimize any property, whether it's a piece of content or your website, or advertising campaign, whatever it is, then you've got to be looking at how can I maximize all the components of the product that I want to be found on. So yeah. layering in Google+, Plus you know, we've actually got to approach it with a search engine mindset because you're still thinking about what are my keywords, how do I want to be found, how does my brand look on the network and I think of it this way and this was what came from the gentleman at Google is we've had lots of algorithm changes with Google and you, know, oh, you may really? have heard you of think? Panda or <laughs> Penguin and Panda yeah. Mark II and um, you know I used yeah. to think they were cuddly black and white animals, they're not nice when Google gets to them. So um, a lot of people were getting slapped around by the algorithm changes and, and the gentleman from Google said to me, I can tell you what we are looking for and right now the two things that will massively impact above what you're already doing in your regular keywords, titles, tags, all of those sorts of things. The two things they're looking for on top of that is video content yep. because Google can now index not just the video but the actual content of the videos and of course video content that is hosted on Google's YouTube, even yes. better. And how often and do we see YouTube coming up in search results? Very well, and not only does it come up well in search results, but it comes up with that, you know, the gorgeous little thumbnail beside it, which we're so, it. we gravitate so much to images, as are Google Plus, Plus Ones coming up with, you know, yes, authorship and right. author rank beside them now. So that, that integration of social with Google um, and really optimizing that with by using video. And for me, I've, I'm actually recommending that people get the videos up on YouTube and embed them in their websites instead of just using self-hosted players and things like that. Now obviously if people are paying for your content, um, self-hosting video content and trainings is important but if you're trying to optimize for search, embedding videos will have a bigger impact. So you're talking and about, sorry if you're on YouTube, you're talking about taking the code and embedding it, not using a plugin to embed it? Is that what you're, you're more talking about, say with uh, maybe a WordPress website which is not quite so easy to embed HTML code into? Um, as long as it still has a direct link to YouTube. So it doesn't okay, matter so the method yep. the method that you're embedding it, as long as it is still an embed where some people were actually uploading uh, through an Amazon S3 account or other players or self-hosting gotcha. the videos. Um, I know a lot of marketers were putting videos on Facebook and then putting a link to the Facebook video sort of back to their website. It will not mm -hmm. get you the same search engine results as putting it on a YouTube channel and then embedding it. Um, I do use a plugin. Yep. 
for mine as well. But um, that will have a bigger impact if it comes from YouTube. And of course, having a link on your website back to your YouTube channel works really well as well. Of course. The second now, component. Sorry, I have yeah, one more question for you when you finish with this one. Yep. Okay, so the second component that the man from Google told me is third party validation. So using social activity to allow other people to tell Google how good your website is. Because no longer are Google just allowing us to stuff in as many keywords as possible. Don't get me wrong, keywords are still important, but we can't just artificially load up pages anymore with keywords and, and make Google happy. So we still position our website the same way, but having other people say they like your comment, they're sharing your content, so like, commenting, sharing, plus oneing and you know and doing taking those social actions now are taking a really high priority in terms of social rank right along with time on page multiple pages and the back linkages so again having your sites linked back to facebook you know youtube twitter google plus but also allowing the commentary to come across onto your page in terms of um, you know logging in with a google account um, even logging in with Open Graph on Facebook allows the Facebook comments to come up on your website and mm -hmm. we're finding that that social commentary and other people sharing your content is becoming vital to getting to the top of your Google searches. Great. And I, from an SEO point of view, 100% agree, definitely. Yay. So talking about social proof, yeah, I agree. It's all right. <laughs> Thumbs up. Uh, from that social proof is vitally important. Now, I actually had an interesting discussion, we won't call it an argument, with a client just in recent weeks, they didn't want to have the little buttons on their website so people could share the content. They thought it didn't mm -hmm. look good. What would you say to someone who says, oh, look, you know, I don't really know about, I don't use the social media things, I don't need those share buttons on my website? Yes, um, and I, I actually have this discussion um, with several web programmers as well because quite often they don't look pretty. You know, my favorite integration is to take a, a resource, it's called a like box from a Facebook page and put it on your website so that every time you post on your Facebook page, it actually updates your website with that same post. And unfortunately, Facebook hasn't given us a lot of resources. They do look quite ugly. <laughs> You know, we can't play with them very much at the moment other than putting nice borders and things around them. So, but what I did was, um, I, I'm not into sort of converting the unconvertible, but what I will say with business owners is test it for a month. Like everything else in your business, test it. Put it on there and let's read your Google Analytics at the end of four weeks. And generally four weeks. And you can link weeks, them together. You can link them together, can't you? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's crucial that you do because as much as I love social media, if it wasn't getting me results, then what I'm doing there is socializing. It's not marketing for my business or it's not effective marketing for my business. And what I generally find is by bringing the linkages over, the results are so obvious so quickly that, the you know, they quickly become converted. And I use my own story in this. When I first started in social media marketing, I was doing YouTube videos. Um, and YouTube videos can help you come up the Google rankings very, very quickly. So I got results just, fast. Just just pause one second. I, I think yeah. you must have somehow read my list of my next sort of set of questions. Oh, okay. <laughs> things, that, things that can possibly get accounts destroyed, banned, nuked, or just go wrong. If you can integrate that into what you're sharing here about your YouTube and the likes and so on. Okay, yeah. Um, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, <laughs> yes, I do, unfortunately, Paul, I do, because you know me well. So I started off in, in YouTube marketing, and um, I was doing very well with my YouTube marketing. And at the time, a lady who I was learning YouTube marketing off, she American via the web, said to me, Zoe, Twitter, this was back in early 2008, Twitter is going to be huge. Now, Twitter is like text messaging for your business on the internet. It's It's got 140 characters. I looked at the network and thought, you know, there's all these celebrities carrying on affairs and doing all sorts of things. You've probably heard about the Australian swimmers getting themselves into trouble and we know Shane mm -hmm. Warne and Liz Hurley, you know, carried on their whole relationship there. So I really looked at it and... Um, I went into denial mode. I went, how could this work for your business? 
it's just a, it might work for the teenagers. You may have noticed I'm I'm not a teenager, um, and I really thought really? it's all right for the young ones. But how could this really work? So she said to me, the, and the one thing she said, she said, Zoe, don't knock it till you've tried it, and um, not in those words because she was American, but. I said, okay, so I jumped on the network to prove she was wrong rather than just tell her she was wrong. And the first two weeks on Twitter, I made a sale for my internet marketing business. It was worth about $2,000 at the time. And I connected with a, a gentleman who was somewhat of an idol of mine in internet marketing in New York. He retweeted or reposted one of my training videos that I had on YouTube. And within 24 hours, I got an extra thousand views on that particular video. It popped up my Google ranking from page uh, from position six to position three, uh, just on that that keyword term and for his core product. And really, this light bulb went off in my head, and I thought the only thing I have done differently here is Twitter. So I had tangible results that it worked. Then I had to set about learning it and getting strategic about it. So I've then integrated from Twitter and YouTube and everything I've done has been connected like this, really firmly integrated. And this is where I'm leading into the traps of doing so. Yes. Yep. Because at the end of the day, social media marketing is fabulous, but you don't own the social media networks. So I Bingo. definitely don't, don't own YouTube. I don't own Facebook. You know, imagine if you'd put a huge amount of effort into MySpace and it kind of died and now it's coming back again and died. But I went, I had actually built a YouTube community. I'd built a channel. I had over 100 videos on the site. I'd had 125,000 views of those videos. I had linked them back to some blog posts, but I had a lot of activity going on on YouTube. I was tweeting YouTube videos out and I was getting... Um, lots of buzz and repost for my YouTube channel. And then I went and got remarried and my name changed and I, I had personally branded on YouTube. And for about 12 months, I fought, and I say it fought, had discussions with YouTube on trying to get my channel name changed. And because I had such a big following, they wouldn't allow me to do it. And I realized, you know, I'd lost control of my brand because now it was the wrong keyword term, my name had changed, people were getting confused and I logged in about four months ago I logged into YouTube and it said, we've noticed you're not really using your real name, would you like to change it? And I got so excited, I thought finally I get to change it to a business name and I can move forward with this, which I did and in the process it popped up, we've created a Google Plus profile for you. And I went, I already have a Google Plus profile. I admin about six pages. Okay. Um, and, you know, in that, I sort of went, it doesn't matter. And the next morning, I had three emails from people saying, we've just joined you on Google Plus, but it doesn't look like you use it. And what Google had done is Google had integrated all of their products right across YouTube, Google Plus, Gmail, everything else. And because I had logged into Google Plus with one email address but had been using a YouTube channel on a different email address that I had been using and promoting for five years, they, they had suddenly said, you have a new YouTube channel. And five years worth of work was suspended. It disappeared. Thousands of backlinks and videos that were locked in my blog and on multiple websites were suddenly said this video is private and didn't exist. And I set about trying to recover that and I thought, you know, if, if I can make that sort of an error, um, I then went back and went, okay, I don't want this one. I don't care if I keep my old name. Can I have it back? And they went, yes, you can. They gave it back to me and then it came up and said your YouTube channel has been deactivated. Now, YouTube has evolved Incredible. and Google Plus has evolved, but you know, during that time it was a real wake up call to me. Two things, don't put all your eggs in one basket and if you're going to put time and invest time and money into marketing your business and growing content, make sure absolutely everything you do comes back to a property you own. So while I'll promote putting it on YouTube and getting the Google juice as I call it and positioning it at the top of the search engines, make sure you have a copy of it yourself. Make sure that you do embed it on a website that you own um, and make sure you have 
backup so that if any one of these accounts is bought out or goes down, changes their terms and conditions, um, or suddenly disables you know, your content, mm. and it could be through no fault of your own or a complete accident, that your business doesn't fall over as a result of it. It's an old adage in business, don't put all your eggs in one basket. And I'm going to say, don't put all your pixels in one marketing or one marketing type. Be strategic about what you're doing and always think about, you know, what are the spoons here? What can happen if something goes wrong? How will I react to that? And how can I minimize the impact it will have on my business by cool. while still maximizing um, the social networks for your own uses as well? Great. Joey, thank you very, very much. As you know, we could talk for hours. We have done, and I wish we could do more. Run out of time very quickly. You do training all around the place, like literally all around the place. For those of us who are here in Australia, how can we find you, follow you, learn more from you? Okay, well, I, I wear two hats when I'm in Australia. So I'm the social media marketing specialist for The Creative Collective. Um, we're based on the Sunshine Coast. They have a team of specialists, um, including you, Paul, who's one of our trainers as well in SEO. So if you're looking for any of the training, go to thecreativecollective.com.au forward slash events, E-V-E-N-T-S, and you'll see all of the training that we're running. Up and down the Australian coast, I go from Melbourne to as far north as Townsville at the moment. But I also do own and operate socialmediashortcut.com. So that's socialmediashortcut.com. I'm very happy to say I'll be in um, USA for most of October running my own trainings as well as attending trainings and having a bit of a holiday. So you're not just limited to Australia with those at all. I have my social media professionals, which is a very high level event coming up um, in only a couple of weeks time in Brisbane. So if you're listening to this and you're, you're more someone like me and you're looking at where do I get my training then I'd encourage you to look at that one. And of course all of my social media networks have wonderful content like this. And if you're just getting started with your social media for your business I would encourage you to go to socialmediashortcut.com and download my uh, seven steps to using social media for your business checklist it will walk you through exactly what we've covered here this evening and it also has some handy hints and tips in terms of websites to offer. It's there free of charge along with all of the content that I'm now reloading and re-establishing on the new YouTube channel as well. Great. Zoe, thank you very much. Socialmediashortcut.com and great to have you on board. Next week we're talking SEO, the good, the bad and the ugly. It's a don't miss show here on the Internet Business Blueprint. All right, folks, thank you very much for joining with me. My name is Paul Bars from paulbars.com. I'll see you in a week's time. Bye-bye.